Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and this is a little author's take on video I've been wanting to discuss for a while now, because I think it's something that not enough people are saying, and it really needs to be said. Today we are talking about deconstruction and reconstruction, and how they're more related than you might have been led to believe. So I'm sure you've all heard the term deconstruction before, Though it's been used in so many different contexts, it's possible you may have lost track of what it really means, because sometimes it's used to describe a brilliant work that everyone loves, and other times people use it to try defending idiotic works that everybody hates. So what is a deconstruction? Well, a deconstruction is what happens when you take a work of fiction, a genre, or a particular medium or something, usually it's some long-established genre, and you pick at it. Sometimes you take away large chunks, sometimes you just pick at it little by little, but the basic idea behind it is to take all the things that make that genre what it is and twist them. Reveal that maybe this long-established thing that everyone is used to in the genre doesn't really work. Either it never worked to begin with, or if it used to work, it doesn't work anymore because the times have changed, but the work didn't change with it. And sometimes that can come in literal deconstructing the actual literal thing. Sometimes it's approaching things from a more philosophical perspective. But either way, that's the idea. You're taking something that everyone's familiar with, taking something that everyone knows and has just accepted the elements of, and you rip it to shreds, basically. Now, reconstruction is a term that doesn't get thrown around as much, but maybe you already can guess what it means. Reconstruction is the opposite of deconstruction. It's where you take something that's been deconstructed and you build it back up. You take the deconstructed work and you either introduce new elements that re-establish it as close to what it used to be but clearly different, or you reinterpret those parts that were specifically targeted by the deconstruction and you build them back up to show how maybe they're not that bad after all. Uh, reconstruction doesn't really get as much attention as deconstruction, but you've probably come across a work of reconstruction before and just never really knew it as such. Now based on that description I just gave you, you might be able to guess my perspective on things. I believe that deconstruction and reconstruction are linked, and I think they should in fact be part of a cycle. And the thing is, I believe that most of the academic and scholarly world has lost sight of that. I think that deconstruction rules the day when it really shouldn't. I doubt that this happened intentionally. It probably was just the slow boiling pot effect that nobody really noticed because it was happening so gradually. But I do believe that scholars and academics and even mainstream audiences have come to regard deconstruction in such a way that it is elevated above all else. And as a result, deconstruction is being presented to us as the goal. Deconstruction is what you want to achieve. That is the philosophy that's being put forward. The deconstructionist works are what you learn about in school. It's what makes the lists of all the essential books and movies and things that you need to experience. They are the works that get entire dissertations written on them. The deconstructions are what people go to as examples of the best of a particular genre. And as a result, people have gotten it in their heads that deconstruction is what you should strive for, with reconstruction being nowhere in that equation. People just think you have to take what was established and you've got to deconstruct it. That's what makes it work. 
And there's also the implication that deconstruction, whether you're making deconstruction or just experiencing the work of deconstruction, there's that implication that it makes you smarter for making or liking those kind of things. Because you're not one of the mindless sheep who goes for the pace pudding norm of that genre. No, no. You are an intellectual who understands that the deconstruction is the best possible form of what it can be. That's the implication, at least. And I do not believe that at all. I am not anti-deconstruction by any means, but I do not believe under any circumstances that deconstruction is the end result. It's, I don't believe it's the thing that you should want to aim for as your end game. Rather, I believe that deconstruction should naturally lead to reconstruction, which itself should naturally lead to a new normal within the genre that was originally deconstructed. Obviously, once it's been deconstructed, it can never go back to what it used to be, but it can come back as something better. It's the idea of weightlifting, let's say. When you're lifting weights to build muscle mass, what you're really doing is you are tearing the muscle. But by tearing the muscle, the mu you are promoting the muscle to heal itself and make itself stronger than it was. You deconstruct your body, basically, so that it can reconstruct itself as something better. But then again, I actually can make it even more literal than that. Pardon me while I indulge in a metaphor that will make this whole thing as blatant as possible to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let us suppose for a moment that you're living in an old house. Not an ancient house, certainly, but a house that's been around for a very long time. And being an old house, not everything is quite what it should be anymore. There are certain parts of it that just don't work anymore, or parts of it that have fallen into disrepair. The windows are stuck, the roof is leaking, the floors in some of the rooms are starting to heave and split, and the pipes are rusted out. Obviously, not a house you can continue to live comfortably in. And whether you want to keep living in that house, or you want to sell it to someone else and move on, you can't leave the house in that particular state because it's unlivable. So, what do you do? You have to take out those parts that don't work. You have to deconstruct the house. Take off the roof. Take out the windows. Pull up the floor. Remove the rusted plumbing. And, while you're doing that, you might even come across problems you didn't know existed before. Mold in the walls, faulty wiring, what have you. Obviously, it is needed. You have to take out those parts that don't work. But once you've removed them, once you have done that deconstruction, what do you do? Do you just leave the house that way? Well, you can't do that because now the house is even more unlivable than it was before. At least before it was still keeping you sheltered, but you've taken away the roof and the windows and the floor, so now you're exposed on all sides. Can't live in a house like that. Well. Maybe you didn't deconstruct enough. Maybe you're supposed to keep deconstructing. But you can't do that either, really, because eventually you won't have any house left. You'll just be left out in the open with nothing. Obviously, once you've deconstructed the house and gotten rid of everything that doesn't work anymore, you have to reconstruct it. You've got to replace the busted windows with windows that can open and close. You have to put on a new roof that won't leak, new pipes that aren't rusted, you know the drill. You can either replace them with exact copies of what was once there, or new things that serve the same function but ultimately work better and make the house a far better place to live in. And then your house is back to normal. That's about as literally as I can put it, really. Deconstruction is necessary, but it should never be your goal, because once you finish deconstructing, what you have left is not sustainable, and you have to reconstruct, or else you've got nothing left. What you have will eventually collapse in on itself, and you'll be left with nothing. The thing is, we've seen this play out before, many, many times. I think the most obvious example you can go with in Western culture would be superhero comics. Obviously, superhero comics started out as being for kids, 
and as a result they were always kind of simple. In the Golden Age, they had fewer restrictions, so you had more variety, not just in genre, but also in what you could get away with showing. But as time marched on, the Comics Code happened, uh, and, well, comics just sort of became a vanilla paste pudding. There wasn't much to them. They remained very simple, very straightforward. The audience for comics had grown up, but comics hadn't grown up with them. And so they were kind of stagnant. There wasn't anything that really made them special, and they were considered hokey and campy and were not taken seriously at all. And then, in 1986, DC delivered the one-two punch of Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns both of which were very dark, deconstructionist works of superhero fiction. There were some reconstructionist elements in The Dark Knight Returns, but it also leaned pretty heavily on deconstruction as well. And when you find most dissertations about it, the deconstruction is what people really like to focus on with that book. So, obviously, you know what happened. Those two books revolutionized the whole medium of comics, completely changed perceptions of what comics were capable of and what the superhero genre could do with its storytelling. I remember seeing an interview with Dennis O'Neill. He was a popular comic book writer, especially back in the 80s. He introduced the question into the DC main continuity, and he's also the guy who killed Jason Todd's Robin in Death in the Family. But... I remember seeing an interview with him where he said the first time he read Watchmen, he went back to his home, grabbed his scripts he was working on, and tore them all up saying, I can do better than this. That's how effective it was. Even people in the medium knew that they had to do better now because the bar had just been reset and it was set really high. So those works of deconstruction injected some new life into the realm of superhero comics. But then what happened? People got so hung up on the deconstruction aspects that that's what they focused on. And in the days to come, well, that led to the dark age of comics in the 90s, where it was all dark and edgy. The heroes acted like villains, and the villains acted like even worse villains. There were mature themes, well, mature in quotes, but I've already spoken my piece about the confusion surrounding mature content in a different video, follow the links, and it was all just horrible, really. People were so laser-focused on the deconstruction that they decided to keep deconstructing. It was partly because they maybe misunderstood what those works were about, partly because they wanted to put their own spin on what those deconstructionist elements were, and partly just wanting to ride the coattails of Moore and Miller, certainly. But either way, they were focused on the wrong things. And as a result, comic books wound up really suffering. But, in amidst that milieu of misunderstood deconstructionist works, you still had some reconstruction. In the 90s, you also had stories like The Death and Return of Superman, or the Batman Nightfall arc. Those were both kind of reconstructionist, because what they did was, they took the established heroes who had been around since the beginning, literally, and rather than deconstruct them the way, say, The Dark Knight Returns did with Batman and Superman, they took those characters out of the picture, found some way to remove them, either by death or severe injury, then give them a replacement that is a like a twisted deconstruction version of who that character is, or maybe multiple characters representing those aspects, show them trying to fill the shoes of the established hero and failing miserably to then remind the audience why the original hero needs to come back and is still relevant. Great works of reconstruction, that's why they're still remembered to this day. Even if people are 
kind of jumping on the bandwagon of saying they're overhyped, there is a reason we still remember them and why we still cite them as examples of good comic book storytelling. Because... They were the reconstructions and amidst all the deconstruction, and they were far from the only examples. And eventually, the Dark Age of Comics ended, and things got back to a new kind of normal. People figured out what really worked from the deconstructions, and what needed to be brought back during the reconstruction. And that's just one example. You could also point to how, over in Japan, at the same time, in fact, during the 90s, Neon Genesis Evangelion became the ultimate deconstruction of the mecha genre and anime in general. And so people started to hop on that bandwagon and tried presenting their own dark, serious deconstructions, not just of mecha, but of other genres, but doing it by following all of the things Evangelion did that maybe weren't the best storytelling choices particularly when it comes to bizarre, abstract, postmodernist conclusions. And that led to a few years in the anime market of some really baffling shows that eventually had to veer back onto a course of saying, wait a minute, we've taken it too far, now we need to steer back. And there are many other examples as well. I'm I can't possibly know them all because I haven't experienced all of them, but if you have any other examples where you can see deconstruction and reconstruction as a cycle, please share them down in the comments. My ultimate point is that I don't want to come across as anti-deconstruction, but I don't want to bolster deconstruction up too much because that's been done. What I want people to consider when you're writing your work is that you shouldn't be so laser focused on deconstruction that you deconstruct yourself into a corner and have nothing to stand on to get yourself out. Because deconstruction is not a goal. It's part of a process. A process that eventually needs you to reconstruct. And yes, reconstruction might not get you on any New York Times lists. And it might not get you the grandiose critical reception, and it might not get you taught in schools, but you know what it will get you? An audience. And of course, let us not forget, once something has been reconstructed and a new normal has been established, it's only a matter of time before stagnation sets in again, and the cycle shall begin anew. That's what you have to understand. That's what I hope I am imparting to you guys. Deconstruction is not the goal, Reconstruction isn't really the goal. The goal is to keep whatever genre you are working in growing. To that end, you need to both deconstruct and reconstruct. And maybe you prefer doing one over the other. It's possible. But then again, Warren Ellis may have written The Authority as a deconstruction of the Justice League, but he also wrote Planetary, which was a reconstruction of superhero comics as a whole. So, even the most diehard deconstructionist has a little reconstructionist in him. Just something to keep in mind as you're working on your own stuff. Go ahead, deconstruct. But don't be afraid to reconstruct. Don't be ashamed of it, even. And don't be ashamed of just doing something that's par for the course in whatever genre you're working in. It's all just part of the process. It all contributes to the perpetuation and growth of fiction. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omniviewer, signing off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.